equitable recovery plan. County officials are focusing their efforts on minority communities in the city and suburbs with the highest case count. The county is also trying to spread broadband internet service to the one in five residents that don't already have access, but helping towns recover is not going to be easy. The county itself is already facing a budget shortfall of at least $200 million, and it recently surpassed Queens, New York, as the county with the most COVID-19 cases in the United States. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle joining me this morning via Zoom. Madam President, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you, Paul, for inviting me. So at the recent board meeting this week, you had an order which uh, came out on March 10th that was set to expire at the end of May, giving you executive powers to do what you needed to do during the pandemic. You asked the Cook County Board to extend that for 120 days through the end of September. You had a couple of commissioners who weren't happy about that. Sean Morrison said it was a massive power overreach, and even Bridget Gaynor, a Democrat, said, can't we kind of review this every 30 days? What was important about the 120? Well, first of all, I think we're still in the midst of the pandemic. I think the governor has predicted that we'll peak sometime in mid-June. And then, of course, it's not the number of cases is not going to immediately fall off the cliff. There'll be a gradual step down. So clearly, we're going to be struggling with this into the fall. And we have said that we are going to waive penalties and, and uh, interest on property taxes due the first week in August as a result of the pandemic. And it just seemed to make sense, given the fact that we have said that we're giving our, our property tax, a uh, whole property tax, property owners pr who, who pay property taxes until October 1st to pay their bills. We wanted to be sure that people understood that there were emergency circumstances that led us to the conclusion that that was an appropriate action to take. Um, it was a bit stunning yesterday. Look, you usually get what you want from the Cook County Board, but nine votes, including seven Democrats, voted to uh, authorize the resolution allowing for the disclosure of people's COVID-19 positive status to uh, emergency responders, including non-law enforcement. Some people said, well, that's like contact tracing. It's not, Madam President, is it? Not at all. And first of all, let me just say, let me repeat what I said at the time. I've been very critical of President Trump for not listening to the scientists in charge of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Institutes of Health about how we should respond to this pandemic and how serious it was. So if I'm critical of the president for not listening to scientists and doctors, it seems to me that I have to be critical of commissioners who don't listen either. And the second point I made was, you know, our scientists and doctors in the Department of Public Health have made it quite clear this is a bad idea that it doesn't make sense to do this, that first responders should consider every uh, home that they visit as a possible, as a possible uh, COVID-19 case. Because many people who have the disease are asymptomatic and only learn either as a result of testing, and testing is not universally available, uh, that they have the disease. So, you know, I, I think it's really important in these times for first responders to understand that in the midst of a pandemic, you have to treat every uh, every uh, time that you go out for service as as a possible encounter with somebody who has the disease. Some commissioners. The third, the third, Some... Just a second, the third point I made, Paul, is that, you know, African-American and Latinx communities have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. And given that, that we live in a country in which there is profound discrimination against black and brown people, uh, I think that, that this proposal put forth by Commissioner Britton just uh, further demonize its black and brown communities and suggest that there's somehow particular risk in black and brown communities that there isn't elsewhere. And, you know, I, I think that this is another opportunity, uh, unfortunately, in a society in which black and brown people already uh, are subject to incredible discrimination for more discrimination. Yeah, it sounds like although they said they'll monitor for abuse, the horse is out of the barn once you release the name and information. Yes, I don't see how you could possibly uh, monitor the behavior of all first responders, yeah. uh, given the the parameter of the of the of the ordinance. I mentioned at the top you have released a Cook County COVID-19 response plan from rapid response to equitable recovery, and um, was sort of the first part of it, which is this response plan has been underway, moving into part of a recovery plan. Just sort of, of curious. By the way, I have to take a moment. Let's just have a little smile at this because you've been issuing some keep calm and and spend your time at home ads uh, that we've seen. We're going to look at a couple of them. Uh, one which uh, turns you into Michael Jordan, uh, which I think is worth talking about. <laughs> and then one, you become the Beatles. You become one of my favorite people. I, I love those ads. What is, uh, what is the message there in physical distancing? You look great. Well, you know, I think we've been using the term social distancing 
but we don't want to isolate ourselves from each other. We want to be simply physically distant. And it's important in these difficult times for us to stay in touch with family and friends and neighbors. Uh, and so we're talking about physical distancing. This is a, this is a play on Abbey Road. I'm a big Beatles fan. Um, and, you know, I think that's the, that's the context we want to create. It's physical distancing, not social distancing. We have to be sure that we stay in touch, care for each other. Uh, and, and that's what we need to do, even though we are physically apart. Um, so much more to talk about. Only a couple of minutes left. It's obviously a grandiose, impressive plan. Any concerns about the cost for implementing this plan as you look to create economic growth? No, let me, let me just say that we, as we look at, at response, we want to be sure that we're talking about equity and not equality. And I think those are, there's that important distinction to make. You know, equality means everybody gets the same. And equity means you look at who has the greatest need. <laughs> so if you're focusing on equity, you look at the communities that have been most heavily impacted by the pandemic and the terrible consequences that's had, not just in terms of healthcare, but economic devastation. So we're gonna be focusing on equity, on trying to respond to the greatest, the communities that have the greatest need in our county as we uh, look toward resources and as we look toward implementing plans for, for response and recovery. In the world of testing, which is so important, I know you had to close down the ER, a part of a Providence hospital for a bit due to a, a positive testing. As I understand it, nurses, doctors, not just Cook County, but all over, they, they don't get required tests like once a week. They're working on patients. Isn't that a mistake? Well, we have testing sites at Providence Hospital and Stroger Hospital for any of our staff. Uh, and of course, for our patients. But the, the, the screening that's done at, at some of our uh, county facilities is t taking temperature. Whenever I go to the emergency operations center, uh, my temperature is taken. Anybody who has a fever, of course, is not admitted. Um, so while we can't do instant testing, we don't really have the capacity to do that. Uh, we do do screening uh, for temperature, for fever, which is one of the most prominent sim uh, symptoms of the disease. Um, one budget question. I always have to talk to you about budget for a little bit. Uh, I mentioned in the in the lead in that uh, 200 million in deficit. I think it's really closer to 260 or 270 you're going to have to deal with. Out of curiosity, I don't think you can cut your way out of this or are we looking for layoffs? Do you have any sense right now of how you'll have to act here? Well, our our financial team is working on this and we have to submit a preliminary budget uh, the end of June. So basically a month from now uh, and we'll try to be prepared. Uh, to look at what the options are to meet uh, the loss in revenue. And let me just say, 65% of the revenues for Cook County government are dependent on economic activity. So it's sales taxes, hotel and motel taxes, mm -hmm. uh, amusement taxes, gas taxes. So we're, we're going to be devastated. And, and our initial estimates, as you pointed out, are, are north of $200 million. And it, it's hard to know okay. how long the shelter-in-place order right. will be in effect and and what it, what impact that will have and how quickly the economy recovers. I mean, some people are are suggesting there will be yeah. a V recovery, steep decline, and then steep yeah. recovery. Others have suggested it'll be more of a U shaped. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be predict. it's going to be tough. I'm sorry to, to we have to end it there uh, due to break. But I thank you so much, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. Listen to Abby Road over the weekend. I will as well. Have a restful weekend. Thanks, Tom. And thank you. We're going to take one more break. More to come on WGN TV Political.